his strategic acumen as a coach and executive. Jerry has made an indelible impact on the sport and culture, and today we are fortunate to have him share his wisdom, insights, and experiences. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Jerry West. me, they were sitting crazy, I'm the 
coach, I'm the announcer, I'm the referee, I'm also the timekeeper. So I would go outside in this little booth that, that was out there in the, someone else's yard, and I would start doing this. I couldn't make a damn shot. So I wanted to feel good about myself because, again, I didn't know what I was going to see when I went off. <clears throat> so anyway, can you imagine 11 years old out there, if someone could have watched this, this would have been unbelievable, something to put on YouTube or something like that. <laughs> you can see my mouth going like this. Okay? You can see me imitating someone who blew the whistle. And you could also see me messing with the time clock. I would shoot 10 damn shots in a row. 12, 14, not make a shot. And the timekeeper in me said, okay, we're gonna find a way to put three seconds on the shot clock. <laughs> so I would stay there, stay there, and stay there until I made a shot. And all of a sudden, I'm the hero. But I gotta go home. So this sort of followed me all my life. And um, I'm going to get to a point. I, I, I have to go kind of in a linear fashion here, if you might. So all of a sudden, I grew up and I was a little scrawny kid. I wish I'd have brought this picture of you. It was the funniest looking thing you've ever seen. I had a 40 inch sleeve length. I probably weighed 70 pounds. Um, I mean, I looked like some character, character that someone would put in a, in a, in a, uh, a comic ad. <laughs> and it was really funny because I didn't think I was going to be anything in my life. I used to say to myself, what am I going to do, what am I going to do with my life? I thought I would be just an average worker uh, growing up in the environment because, again, everything my father seemed to do. Uh, we lived in four different homes. Uh, two of them were really embarrassing to go into. So all this formulated in my mind, and, and I always said to myself, I, I just hope something will give me a chance to do something special. Never believing that it could happen. Never. All of a sudden, I go to high school. And I grew one summer between my ninth and 10th grade. I grew six inches one summer. I couldn't even walk down the stairs without falling down the stairs. And obviously that's kind of dangerous. And my mother out here, my mother says, you're going to kill yourself, you're going to kill yourself. So I didn't at that point in time. But, um, so I get to high school, and my junior year, I reached over 30 points a game when I was a junior. And I had one scholarship offer, one. And I was saying to myself, well, that's not good enough. But I played the best conference in the state. So the next year, we won the state championship. I set all the scoring and rebounding records that are still there to, to this day. The awkward part of it for me, no one at my house, I didn't feel anyone wanted me. Now all of a sudden, People wanted me. These tests, these same people would not have ever said a word to me if I didn't have something they wanted. And here I am saying to myself, my goodness, this is kind of crazy because I didn't want to believe anything they said. My father made $4,000 raising six kids. And if there hadn't been a little store out on the street, and I'll never forget the name of it, Quines. We would probably start it now. There's, there's four of us. And now I have people offering me, 1956, offering $15,000 a year to go play basketball. And I said, I am really someone who mulls things over in my mind. I'm, a, I'm complex. Complicated, and all of it goes back to when I was a kid. And here's I 
I'm trying to make a decision where I want to go to school. And I'm saying to myself, my God, if I, we had this money, maybe we could have a car and live in a house that you wouldn't be embarrassed to go into. So I finally said, hell with it. I want to go to my state university in West Virginia for zero, nothing. From there, my life was kind of Cinderella-like. Um, you know, I was one of those people who got an awful lot of praise, played on a great team. And when you play with, on a great team, there's something really special about it. As I mentioned to you before, it's like going into a, a house or a home. When people are successful, what do they always do? They always have a, a second home, right? Go on a vacation. I've been fortunate enough to do that, but I'll tell you, that's a house. I'd rather go to my house, my home. There's love, affection, warmth, familiarity, all the things that I like that I never saw when I was a kid. And I would ask each and every one of you, do you have a second house? Or on a vacation where you stay in somebody's second home. Raise your hand. When you, when you go on a vacation, I'll guarantee you can't wait to get home. There's something powerful about being in those kind of surroundings. And so this is a lesson I learned when I was a kid. I have lived in a house. I never lived in a home. So in my life, this has reflected who I am today as a person. Um, as I mentioned to you, I love people. I will do anything for someone that in need that you trust and you feel that they're telling you the real story. So all of a sudden now, 